When did you first meet Wilma Elizabeth McDaniel? Well, I met her first through uh, this book uh, by Prince Albert Wynn. It uh, came out in 1994, and this happened to be in early 1994. Uh, I had just started writing what I called my, uh, you know, I'm a historian, I had already always written the scholarly kinds of academic uh, uh, histories, you know, relevant, I thought, but um, uh, still, you know, very much uh, academic history. And I had started writing these stories that seemed to be want to be told, I was calling them red dirt stories. And a lot of those ended up in, in my book, um, uh, Red Dirt Growing Up Oki. But I sent some of these to my ex-husband, who's still a good friend, a poet, uh, Akama Indian poet, uh, Simon Ortiz. And uh, he, it, it, uh, he then um, sent me this book. And he says, you should, um, you, you would probably really like to meet this poet, and I had never heard of Wilma Elizabeth McDaniel. And I, um, I absolutely was just floored by it. This was the, I think he first sent me a um, cutout of, of this poem and said, I'm sending you the book. But this was the first poem of hers I read. It's called A Buried Treasure. L.B. Hayes ruined his expensive shoes, squashing around the autumn desolation of a sharecropper cabin in Caddo County. Oakey boy turned 50, searching for anything that had belonged to his father when he was fighting the Great Depression. Kicked at a lump behind the caved-in cellar and uncovered a rusty Prince Albert tobacco can. Stowed it away as he would a saint's bones in his Lincoln Continental and headed back to Bakersfield. And I fell in love. I said, I have to meet this woman. And another of her poems, when I got it, this, uh, this poem, I said, this is how I want to write Red Dirt. And this poem is called Oklahoma Litany. Top, top drawers of memory never contain anything of value for me. When when wounded and needing a balm, I pull out the bottom drawer of my mind, marked Oklahoma, which holds a list of small, raw towns with names of touching beauty. I recite with reverence, Bolegs, Depew, Pretty Water, Ida Bell, Lone Star, Gypsy Corner, Broken Arrow, Cloud Chief, until the words form a prayer which I do not understand, but close the drawer of my own amen. Mm, I and I, yes, I said, this is how I want to write. Mm -hmm. I've got to find this, this poet. And um, it wasn't hard. Uh, you know, it says on the back, she lives in Tulare, California, so I called information. Mm -hmm. And her name wasn't in there, but uh, Roy, McDaniel was in there. So I called and talked to what turned out to be her um, her little brother. He was about 79 at the time. <laughs> and uh, Roy was her interloper so that she could screen. She, she had a telephone, but she didn't list her number. Mm -hmm. People would call there and he would kind of screen. So he talked to me a long time. And I told him about myself and everything, and he said, I'll give her your message. So she called back. Mm. But she told me later that nine out of ten people who try to contact her, she wouldn't call them back because mm. they just wanted a piece of her and she wanted to write, you know, mm -hmm. and not just, you know, be, be all these graduate students wanting to study her and <laughs> everything. <laughs> but I went down and just invaded, you know, I, I just the next weekend after talking to her on the phone, I went down there. And um, it's just like my father, when I go, my father was still alive, and I'd go visit him, he'd say, well, let's go eat at Long John Silver's. <laughs> he said I would take her out to eat. So we went to Long John Silver. 
you know, that chain mm -hmm. and, um, and had fish and um, just, it was just as if we'd always known each other. As she knew me better, she read me better than I read her. She just, she just could, um, just with a few, with anyone, you know, just with a few pieces, she could, she could just know you. you know? She was the best reader of people I've ever seen. And not just other Okies, you know, she could size people up in a minute.